Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here in my home in lovely Ligonier, Pennsylvania. And yeah, hopefully you all are doing well out there. Uh, and hopefully you had a good holiday if you celebrate. Um, we had a pretty mellow uh, holiday. Uh, I got my COVID booster uh, a couple days ago. We're getting ready to go to Tucson, Arizona for the annual gem and bead show. Gem and mineral show. I don't know what it is, but whenever I turn my camera on, my eyes start watering and it feels like I have to sneeze. I think it's like a mental thing, maybe, you know, like looking into the sun or something. Um, anyways, uh, so we're getting ready for that. And so I got my COVID booster and that kind of, I thought I was fine. I thought I just had a sore arm. Uh, and then it got really cold here as it did many other places in the country. Um, and so we had to cover the windows with clear plastic. We ended up running out of clear plastic and using the plastic from the pellet stove um, with the pellets for the pellet stove. So it kind of looks a little bit, uh, you know, loving hands of home at the cottage, at Star Cottage, uh, Star Cottage Studio. Um, but, you know, it is what it is and it's gonna, we're gonna make it work. So anyways, when we were doing that, it was kind of, uh, I was kind of feeling a little bit uh, out of it and I was getting, uh, I was feeling fine and then all of a sudden my energy just dropped and, um, the past couple days, I just really have been super, super tired. So you'll have to bear with me if I uh, wander around in my brain. Um, one of the reasons why I'm at the house instead of at the cottage is that um, I have the minivan today and it has a two wheel drive and not the all wheel drive. And I was afraid that I was gonna get stuck in the driveway. So I know in the spring, when it starts warming up, one of our priorities at the cottage is to get some gravel and put that down because I almost got stuck the other day and it was uh, not a good and happy feeling. Um, so anyways, we're here. And I was like, I don't really have any of my beading stuff. So what are we going to do? Um, so for Christmas, I, maybe this, maybe he got for my our anniversary. I can't remember, but William got me a jump press. So, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit um, as we get into our project. Um, so hopefully you all are doing well out there, and that you had a good holiday. Um, if you are watching, let me know. Um, say hello, and maybe where you're from. Um, also, if you would be so kind, please like and share this video. Um, I'm so terrible at um, asking people to like and share the videos. And William's like, you have to do it. If you don't do it, people won't do it. So please like and share our videos. Um, if you're on YouTube, subscribe and turn on notifications. Um, I know that I personally get notifications from YouTube uh, a little bit more than I do on Facebook. So if you're ever wondering uh, when we're on, we usually we're on around 5 Eastern uh, Standard Time. But sometimes we go on a little bit later or sometimes we pop on and people are like, oh, I missed it. Um, that's probably one of the best ways to to keep up to date. Um, I see a couple people are watching. Hello, everyone. Julie is watching. Hey, Julie. Suzanne is watching. She says, hello, Andrew. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I'm feeling mostly fine. I just don't have, uh, I don't know. The other thing is I went and cleared the snow off the car, off the, off the minivan, and I was kind of winded. I'm a little bit flush still from that. And I was like, ah, I think I'm just going to stay home. 
And I was like, William, what am I going to show the people? And he's like, we'll just talk to them. And I was like, but they're going to get so bored if I just talk. So um, here we, I figured something out real quick in my brain. Uh, Michelle says, hi, Andrew and William. And hashtag AG bead fam. Sandra's watching. Hello, Sandra. Bonnie's watching. She says, hope you are doing okay, Andrew. I'm doing all right. Hopefully all of you are doing well out there. Uh, Michelle says, we'll be working on my jewelry while I listen. Oh, good. I always, I like to do that too. I always try to have some kind of project with me um, to keep my hands busy. If I don't have my hands busy, I kind of get kind of weird. Um, Marcy's watching. She says, hello, Andrew. Hope you feel better soon. Yeah, I feel okay. Just really, really tired. Um, which I haven't been sleeping too, too much. Or actually, I have been sleeping more. But up until recently, I haven't been sleeping as much. Because we've been trying to hustle and get ready for Tucson. And um, that's a big... There's just a lot involved with that. So, um, so yeah. Maybe that's catching up. I don't know. Maybe the dark skies are catching up. I don't know. Uh, Teresa says, hello, Andrew from Long Island, New York. Howdy. Amanda's watching. Hey, Amanda. Sylvia's watching from Omaha. Um, she says, love my pearl challenge mix. Oh, good, good. I started working on next month's challenge mix. Um, and it's really pretty. It's really, really pretty. So um, hope, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it, but I like it a lot. Also, I wanted to let you all know that if you ordered one of the TGBE mystery kits, which is our global, one of our, the very first global adventure kit, those I believe have all shipped out except for the one that sold. There is one store straggler that got picked up uh, on before Christmas and Barb has been out so um, they that last one didn't ship out but I believe most of all of the other ones have so that's exciting hopefully you enjoyed the little surprise that I included in there I worked on that all night for y'all so I hope you like that um, and if I think it's 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 time, you know, you can if you if you like the surprise, you can post a picture of it in uh, in the design challenge group if you want, because usually we try to keep that under like a, a secret. But um, anyways, you can you can show the secret because I think it's really fun and maybe it'll encourage people to participate the next time. Um, Marcy says, love my gel press. Just refound them a month ago and I'm loving it from Arctic, Iowa and sending safe vibes to all that were in the path of this crappy weather. Yeah, it's been some weather. We are lucky, knock on wood, we're just outside of the worst of it in Pennsylvania. They're like up in Erie, they had some really bad lake effect snow. And in Western New York, they had some terrible, terrible, I mean, it was like 40 something inches of snow, which was pretty wild. I was like, oh my. Um, I saw pictures. There's some folks I follow on Instagram, who's in his studio. And they were posting pictures of it. And I was like, holy guacamole, this snow's like up to here. And I was like, uh, I don't know how tall they are, but that's still too, 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 too much snow for me. Uh, Tracy says, hello, I've been absent. And today I realized I could tune in while driving safely, of course. Oh, good. Well, thanks for tuning in, Tracy. Uh, travel safely out there. It's, uh, uh, we were driving around the other day and I don't know what it is, but uh, folks have been driving wild, which I don't know. 
not my favorite. Um, Marcy says, I'm just wearing brown paper bags to use with my gel press and gelatos. Um, I will be perfectly honest and, and tell you that I'm not super experienced with the gel press. I just got it. Um, so I've been experimenting while I've been kind of recuperating and making little things to raise money for Tucson. Um, and so I've been playing around with the gel press and, um, so yeah, it's pretty fun so far. Uh, Robin says, hi gang. Hey Robin. Diane's watching. She says, I use my gel press often. Oh, good. So this is all going to be old news to y'all. Y'all going to be teaching me things because I'm fairly new. By fairly new, I mean within the last day or so. Barbara's watching. Hello, I just finished moving and was uh, staring at the mess depleted. Oh, no. Well, hopefully that goes well. I I kind of don't don't like moving, but it is a nice kind of thing to have a good fresh start. Um, Tracy says, "Congrats on the course entrance." Sorry, I can't remember details. I'm in uh, Beaver County, Pennsylvania. Hmm, course entrance. Oh, the scholarship that I got. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, a part of this program called Acre Partners, and they had leftover scholarships for taking a workshop at Touchstone. And I'm a board member at Touchstone, so I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to do it. And they said, sure, you're allowed. So I said, sign me up. And I'm super excited about that. I'm going to be working with Harlan Butt, who's an amazing enamelist uh, who specializes in cloisonne. Um, Teresa says the surprise was amazing. Oh, good. Suzanne says mine should come out, come tomorrow on Thursday. Oh, good. Or Thursday. Oh, good. Robin says, 73 today, tomorrow 58, and rain for the next few days. Oh, my. You're in Arizona, right? Tempe, right? I can't remember. Teresa says, yes, Buffalo, New York got hit really bad. 36 people died. That's really sad. Bonnie says, what's a gel press? I'm going to show you, Bonnie, and then you'll know all about it. Um, Diane says, hello, I don't even know what a gel press is. Well, you're in luck because I'm going to show you. I'm going to look, what's this? Um, I first found out about gel press through Kat Kerr, um, who was also on an episode of Make It Artsy, um, probably several. Um, and so that's where I found out about it. Um, Marcy says, you will look at recyclables in a different way. Carolyn Dubé has great short videos for inspiration. Oh, great. Um, Teresa says, where do you buy a gel press? I don't know, because William got it for me. Um, but I'm thinking that he got it either at Dick Blick or at um, Jerry's Artorama. Um, Kristen said, what's the difference between a gel press and a gel plate? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I think the gel plate has a rigid backing um, and the gel press doesn't. But I could be wrong. Um, Julie says, I made it. Holiday cleanup distracted me from time. Yeah, you're just in time. We didn't actually start yet. So not... Well, we started talking, but we didn't really start, like, crafting. Uh, Tracy says, yes. Um, Norma's watching. Hey, Norma. Uh, Amanda says, hi, Norma. Uh, Marcy says, nothing, Kristen, just different manufacturing. Oh, I thought one had a rigid backing, but I don't know. I just got the gel press because that's what they were using, uh, what Kat Kerr is using. 
Um, Barbara says, pro moving tip. If you're over 40 and childless, hire all your friends' teenagers with strong backs. That sounds like a good idea. Because um, we, we've been moving... We just got the cottage and moved a bunch of stuff. And there were days when I thought I was thunderstruck, like something like punched me and beat me up because um, I'm not as young as I used to be. Um, Robin says, yep, Tempe, great memory. And Marcy says, love Cap Kerr. And Marcy says, Dick Blick was where I got mine. And yes, Jerry's has them as well. Um, and she said, you can buy by the backing. Um, Diane says, Michael's and Hobby Lobby, sometimes Walmart has them. Yeah, I don't really know of a small business that you can get them, but, um, I'm sure that if you go to the gel press website, you can get all the resource info on what is local to you. Um, all right, so I'm going to flip this around and we're going to get started. All right, you're going to see the ceiling for a second. All right, so this is maybe. Let me see if I can turn this on. There's a reflection off of this, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. Um, so this is not necessarily the most ideal situation, um, but I put down some cardboard um, and that is so that I don't mess up William's desk because I don't think he would appreciate me doing that. Normally though, if you have, um, uh, like I have a piece of um, countertop that's like a Corian type of uh, uh, countertop that I use. I also have sheets of kind of heavy glass that I use when I'm working with polymer clay. Um, so uh, this is wonderful when because it, it sticks to that and it doesn't move around. Um, the way that I have it now is I have it stuck on the piece of plastic backing that it comes with. It, this is a gel press, which is basically, if you all remember this, there's like that, those, those uh, grippy hands that you would like put, you would like throw it against the wall and it would stick to the wall. And then it would like slowly go down. Do y'all remember those? I don't know if I'm just having a mem memory of something, but that's kind of like the same material it feels like. Um, so it's slightly sticky, uh, but not like sticky, sticky, like sticky, like it's not like sticky, like it's got an adhesive but it's like sticky in the sense that it would cling to a piece of glass if you if you put it on a piece of glass. Um, so for this situation, I've got this on this plastic backing. I didn't get rid of that. That's what it comes in. But I found that it's kind of useful until I kind of find a more permanent place to, to use that. Um, I don't recommend getting rid of the packaging because that's how you can store it and it will make it easy for cleanup. So this is the gel press. This is the, um, let's see, where? This is the eight by 10, I believe. The eight by 10 gel press. They come in different sizes. Um, and the larger sizes do cost more. Um, the smaller sizes are very affordable. So if you're working on smaller sizes and you're kind of just wanting to dabble, that may be a good place to start. Now, there's also cleaning products. You can use a baby wipe to clean it. Um, but I find that it stays relatively clean just by using it. Um, and then you can always wash it with uh, warm, soapy water. All right. So... Uh, Teresa says that she remembers those hands. 
And Robin said, yes, my son got them out of the 25 cent gumball machine. Um, Diane says, there are also many recipes to make your own. Um, you know, I looked at some of those and um, I'm sure that somebody could figure it out. And, but I, this was just a little bit easier and less messy. I saw somebody make their own and I was like, don't, I was like, they made such a huge mess. Anyways, so this is already ready. So what I recommend is having two brayers. Now brayers are roller. Now there are rollers. I got another roller and it was a cheapy roller. And uh, I need to like do something to break it in because these edges stuck out a little bit more. So they left lines in my print. So I'm going to have to go and like maybe sand it down or do something to bevel the edges on the, the other brayer. But these ones are pretty good. I have two different brayers. One is my clean brayer and one is my kind of dirty brayer. I just washed this so it doesn't look dirty, but um, it is, it's my dirty brayer. And I'm sure that's going to be somebody's stage name someday, Dirty Brayer. It sounds kind of obscene, but whatever. So this is what you use to move the paint around. Now, one of the things that I kind of found uh, tricky at first was um, getting the right amount of paint. I was putting on too much paint to begin with, and uh, it's neat, the effect is neat, but it's not always necessarily what you want to have done with you, you it just is kind of gloppy. Um, and so this is, uh, let me get, the paper because that would be helpful. William just cleaned his office, so um, everything's kind of stacked up already. All right, so there's a lot of things that you can do to play around with this. Um, but I've got some acrylic paint. I'm going to use water soluble paint. Um, I wouldn't recommend using oil paints. And uh, I saw a couple people use them, but I, I don't know. I just, oil paints gives me PTSD from when I was in art school and things would take forever to dry. Now, I also saw people using alcohol inks. Um, and I'm just gonna let y'all know, alcohol inks are not light fast. So if you're using that for your artwork, um, you just need to be mindful of that because it will fade over time in sunshine and it will lose its vibrancy and color. So um, if you do use alcohol inks, I would recommend uh, taking and making a digital copy and then uh, use that because otherwise it will fade. And then you're like, what, what happened to my beautiful, vibrant things? I've seen a lot of people recently use, try, using it in their jewelry creations. And um, while it's very beautiful and I love the effects that you can get with it, it's not light fast and it will not stay like that. So just so you know, I, I did a whole bunch of things uh, with alcohol inks early on, and I made my own alcohol inks and did all kinds of stuff. And then once I realized that they were not light fast, that's when I kind of, uh, I don't want to say it lost its luster, but it lost its luster for me. So if you like to use them, you know, feel free. Just know what you're getting into because they're not uh, archival or permanent. Even if the bottle says archival, they must mean like in a temperature controlled room in the dark because um, I've had pieces that were out in the sunshine and not even that long and they faded. So just keep that in mind. All right. 
So I've got these really beautiful cheapy paints that I've got. They're acrylic paints. And I'm just going to dab this on, squeeze out the tip, and dab a little bit on. And I'm not going to be super precise about this because this kind of creates very organic... Um, I mean, I guess you could be very precise with it if you wanted to be. Um, but for me, I kind of just want to get color down. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to play with my color theory. Generally, I like to mix my colors. Um, and at first I was like, oh, oh no, this isn't going to really mix the colors very good. And what I realized is that when you use the brayer, the brayer will help um, mix the colors. So you're going to have um, that mixing action happen there. So I did a peach and yellow, and now I'm going to do a white. Now, the cool thing about what we're going to do with the making the paper beads is sometimes you end up with prints, and the prints are kind of blah. I mean, you can save them and do all kinds of things. Um, but um, sometimes you end up with prints that are not like necessarily your favorite. So this is a kind of a cool way to kind of salvage those, um, those prints so you just don't throw them away. Now, that's probably plenty. I kind of want to add another color, though. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple different techniques. So this is the brayer. This is my dirty brayer. And I'm just going to go back and forth. And this is going to kind of create a, a polka dot effect. Almost like... Um, a um like almost like a uh, leopard print almost and i like that now off to the side i've got this which is what i use to clean my brayer in between prints and that's and you just roll it back and forth and you just get the worst of that off and later, I'll go back and wash this. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do. Now, if you want to just pull the print like this, you could definitely do that. You can also layer it. You can also take things like, um, this is just tissue paper, and you can dab it, and that'll distress that pattern. Um, and you can do different things. You can use bubble wrap. You can use stencils. There's so many different things that you can use to impart a texture. You can even do photo printing with uh, um, certain magazine pages you can use, and it will create a figure in the back. Um, I'm just letting this dry just ever so slightly so that when I do the next color, it doesn't come completely up. All right, and then I'm just going to go back over here. I'm going to just lay down some of this green. And this is going to peek through the kind of the gaps or the holes in my that I pulled up with that piece of um, um, that piece of uh, tissue paper. And this is going to kind of work that color in also. So you'll, because it wasn't completely dry, dry. So this is a good way of getting this in there. Now you can also go the other way and kind of work this in, blending it. And you can see kind of that the print underneath is still there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this as just regular printer paper. And I'm going to put this down. And just slightly go over it with my hand, the flat of my palm. And I'm going to go work 
from the inside out to the edges and make sure to get the edges. Now just be mindful of not, um, you know, running your hand along the edge of the paper because you can get paper cut. Um, and you can get, um, this is kind of a ghost print. So this is pretty cool, I like that. Um, now, if you want a cleaner print, you can take the clean brayer instead of using your hand and go and press the kind of firmly against it. And that will create a nice kind of um, a much uh, firmer adhesion from the paper to the paint. However, I kind of like this kind of ghosty kind of misty look. So that's why I did that. Now I'm gonna go and you bump up the color a little bit and do some orange. This is kind of an orangey red. And I'm gonna do um, some yellow. And just play around with this. And I'm gonna get that dirty brayer out. Now, if you're concerned about it getting kind of overly messy, you can always go back in and um, use a baby wipe and clean everything while you are working. Um, but I kind of like the artifacts of the things that are left over. So, um, meaning that I don't mind it. And I'm working this pretty, pretty smooth, um, blending those colors, getting them nice and smooth, trying to get out those, the brayer marks in there. Um, and that is just gonna, you know, I think I'm just, um, this table's a little bit Wonka doodle, so, but it's pushing the paint around, so you get the idea. Um, but I'm I'm mixing this in. It's pretty sunset color. I know you can't probably see it on the see it as well. And then I'm just pulling up some of this with the tissue paper. All right. And then I'm gonna take that print that I just made and um, I'm going to kind of eyeball it. I don't really care for this project if my registrations kind of line up or not, but I'm gonna start in the center and smooth it out and push to the sides. And then I'm gonna actually get that brayer, the clean brayer. And the reason why I like the clean brayer, I saw some people use the other side, um, just use a dirty brayer also. And you can do that, um, but your backs will have paint on them. And then that usually means your hands will have paint on them, which is, you know, a part, you know, it doesn't, I'm not opposed to getting my hands dirty as an artist, but sometimes you've got stuff to do and you don't necessarily want to have to deal with that. Now, the other thing is, is that sometimes you don't want things to stick together. And since I don't have any drying racks kind of set up, I kind of lay things precariously on the carpet and I don't necessarily want to get uh, paint all over my carpet. So here is, I've just pulled this up. And then see so you have this. Um, and it's a little bit muddy, which is okay. Um, but I think that's pretty fun. Like that's, uh, I think it's a pretty fun. You can also play with metallics and do all kinds of things. Um, and it takes up the paint pretty good. I mean, there's not anything left over. There's paint on the under, underside of this. 
because there's some that seeped in, but I'll clean that later. But you can go back over and do it several times and make a really fun pattern. Now, if you want, you can actually draw into, you can use like, um, uh, it's called a, um, a clay shaper and it's got a tip that's not sharp because you don't want to cut up your, your gel press. Um, but you can use that and you can doodle in this and make little scribes. You can probably make your own with just like, you know, whatever kind of the end of a pen or something that's not sharp. Um, you could probably use your fingernails. Um, um, so anyways, so the next step is to let this completely dry. This is mostly dry already, but I'm gonna let this dry off to the side and I'm gonna put this off to the side. And it's fun, you can use that, uh, you can cut things out with it, you can collage with it. Um, here are some that I made earlier. This one has a pearlescent paint in it. And then this one also has a pearlescent in it. And I mean, these are not my favorite. I have my favorites set aside for a special project that I'm working on. Um, but I still like these, but they're not necessarily gonna go with the, the, the project that I'm working on right now. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to turn these into paper beads, all right? And um, I think this is a, a fun way to use these up. Um, a little backstory, um, when I was little, um, I can't remember how old, I was probably really little, um, my grandma, she, on my dad's side, she was a super crafter. She was always crafting and making stuff. And so we used to raise money for their church bazaar. And so we would make paper beads. And I remember her showing us this technique. Um, and hers was a little bit different. We used magazine paper, like the glossy magazine paper, because she said it made prettier beads. Um, but, you know, it, it's up to you about how, you know, what you do and how you do it. But I remember sitting on the steps of the church because she lived right across from the street from the church. And we would roll paper beads. And I don't know how they were all crusty and got sand in them and who knows what else. Um, but we had a little station set up with paper plates and we were rolling paper beads and then they would string them up and make necklaces out of them. So we did that when I was super little. And then I got, again, reacquainted with this. Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's been a while. But our friend Crystal Wick, she, was a, um, she had a company called Sassy Silky Beads. And um, she was talking about how she made her beads and they were very similar but different to the way that we made our paper beads. Um, and so this is kind of uh, what I can remember from making them. I haven't made them in a really long time because most of the times if I want paper beads, I just get the Uganda ones because um, they're already made. And um, yeah, so this is a way to use the gel press prints. Um, Julie says, what kind of paper? This is regular printing paper. So the reason why I'm using this as opposed to a glossy paper or a watercolor paper or something like this, that is because the watercolor paper for one is too stiff and the glossy paper doesn't always like to stick to itself. Um, and so that can cause problems sometimes. So for this part of the demo, you're gonna need one of your gel press prints. You're gonna need some kind of straw. Um, generally, like the stir stick straws are like top notch for this kind of project. 
But if you want to have a large hole bead and you want a great big hole, I don't know what you're going to put in, some beads or something, bead, the beaded beads or something. Um, this is an option for that. So depending on what size of a straw you use will determine what size hole um, you have. Um, now, for also for this part of the, the demo, we're going to need some sharp scissors. I have a shish kebab skewer, which I can show you uh, the technique that I learned on. It's a wee bit trickier in the sense that um, uh, it can get stuck a little bit easier. So I'll show you both techniques, and then you can decide for yourself what you want to do. Um, we're going to need a pencil. I've got this mechanical pencil that I stole from William, and we'll need a ruler, all right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, precisely eyeball this. And you can kind of hold it up into the light, or you can just trim it yourself. Um, I kind of like to have the clean edges, but I am not really interested in this white border. So I'm just going to trim off this white border, which I'm going to keep because I'm a hoarder like that, but I'm gonna, I make paper also. So all these scraps I can incorporate in the paper pulp, um, but uh, I, I wanna focus on the color and the print. Um, and this is a good way of using these prints if you have a print that you made and you're not necessarily in love with it, um, this one's all right, but I kind of think it, uh, I don't know, it, it's a little bit muddy in parts, which is fine. But if you have prints that you're not in love with, this is a good way to use those. All right, so I want my bead to be approximately an inch long. And this ruler, in theory, has an inch. I think that's it. There we go. All right. So I'm going to take this and measure this. And I can't really see. But I'm marking this off in inch lengths. Apparently, I'm making a lot of beads. And I'm going to go on this side. And I'm going to also mark an inch length. Now, I did not cut this completely even when I went and um, trimmed off the white, but that's okay. This doesn't have to be exactly 100%. Um, you know, it doesn't have to exactly be perfect. It helps if it, it's more... Um, it helps if it's, if it is more precise. But, um, it doesn't have to be like, you know, a laser precision. It does help if it's not completely cockeyed, but um, all right. So I'm going to show you if you do a straight thing like this, like if you make just a triangle and you can do it, um, you're going to figure out the middle of this, which I'm going to eyeball this. And you're going to figure out, you can do it, but it's going to create, I'm going to show you the, what's going to happen. Um, if you just go and make just regular strips like this, you're going to end up with some problems. So what I suggest is measure up about two inches or so, and then do your taper. And then depending on how thick you make your beads, how thick you make this piece, 
it will determine how wide your your uh, bead is and also if it has a ring around it like a saturn bead and i'm just gonna um uh just use my scissors and trim this uh tracy says could you use a polymer clay texturing sheet uh you could you could use almost anything um some things you're just going to want to be careful of and wash off um and I'm gonna save my little scraps cause I can make things with that as well. But I'm just using my scissors and I'm gonna show you the different kind of techniques. Now, if you use this one, it's gonna give you some problems because this is the way that I was taught was use just the, the triangles. Um, and what's going to happen is that it's going to instantly start to taper when you roll it. Um, and I'm going to show you on the big one. And so when you go to roll this, it's going to have these weird parts where it doesn't line up. See, it's going to have these kind of weird like overlap. And that's not a problem necessarily. But uh it can be it, it's not always awesome all right because you're gonna have this kind of weird sharp thing um which is fine but um that's not what we want to do so what i'm gonna do is i've got this tapered one and depending on how you uh cut it if you cut it to a sharp point it's going to create a kind of a a sharper um, line in the middle, which is kind of fun because then you can see the the patterning from the other, from the underneath side, and it's not getting covered up every single time. All right. So you can do this a couple different ways, and I'm going to show you the way that I'm going to a couple different ways. Now, this is PVA glue. Now, PVA glue is an archival glue, and it is designed for uh, paper crafts. Now, I got this from Carriage House Paper in Brooklyn. It's not exactly the cheapest glue, but um, it won't discolor and turn different colors um, and yellow over time and disintegrate. Um, I, when we were, I've done this using um, wood glue and the wood glue is cool because it's super hard when it dries. However, it yellows and it can crack. Um, so just be mindful of that. Now you can use, and I've used this um, as regular white Elmer's glue. Now don't get the cheapy school glue because I think they just put extra water in that. But the Elmer's glue, like the regular Elmer's glue, is uh, uh, better than like the the whatever glue that they give the children. And um, you'll see the difference because one label will be all solid and it will say Elmer's and have the little cow or whatever. And then one will say Elmer's schoolhouse children fun glue. And then that one kind of is not always excellent. Um, it can work, but it's not as grippy as the uh, regular white glue. And um, um, it can, in other pro projects, it can curdle. So just keep that in mind. But for this, I'm going to use PVA glue. All right. And um, so. The thing about PVA glue is that it can dry out. Well, I guess all glues can dry out. So, and also you don't want to have a ton because if you put a ton of glue, it will squeeze out the sides and it will make your project messy. So you don't necessarily want that. Um, so just be mindful of that. Now I'm going to take this, I'm just going to use my fingertip and I'm just going to run this around the very tip of this uh, straw. 
And I'm not putting too much because too much and it gets everywhere um, and too little and it won't stick. And then I'm going to line this up and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the paper and it's just basically moistening the first round of it. Um, and then I'm just going to start tightly rolling this around. Now you can see because I have that taper built in, you're going to have a good center core in your um, in your bead. You're not going to have that kind of weird little um, cowlick. Um, and so just keep rolling. You're going to want to roll fairly tightly and evenly. So sometimes that helps to do it against the, the page like that. And if you're happy with it just like this, you can always leave it like this. But I, I like it to be have a little bit of weight to it. So um, that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this like so and create that core or that bead rather and then so i'm going to get that little tail i'm going to stick that tail down with a little bit of glue now notice i have been very sparing with how much glue that i've been using and the reason why is i don't want this to look very gluey um, you know, how sometimes if you use too much glue, it looks like you use too much glue. And um, so that's what that looks like. Now to trim this, you can trim this directly off and you just line that up and use your sharp scissors and cut that. And then when this is completely dry, you can put this out. Um, it's got a core in it, so it's not going to get snagged up on anything. Um, and you can put that in the the straws come in all different colors. So if you if you I like how that little peak of green kind of complements that. Um, and once this is completely dry, you can coat this and seal it. You can seal this with crystal Krylon if you want. If you are um, in a well-ventilated area and you kind of have a stick that you put this out on like so, and then you spray it, um, lightly mist it from back far. Thinner coats from further back are better than thicker coats up close. Or you could use Mod Podge on it. Um, they have a hard curing Mod Podge, um, which is, um, really good for this since it's going to be kind of getting banged up because it's jewelry components. So you can use that. You can also use UV resin and that will create almost a glass like finish. So you can really experiment with what, how you finish these off and seal them up. And I think that's the fun thing. I think that's really cool with the metallics. Um, and, um, Bonnie says, can you water down tacky glue? Um, I am I don't really use tacky glue too much, but isn't that usually for like fabric? Um, in theory, I guess you could try it, especially if you are gonna, if you were gonna do like a gel print on like fabric or something, then maybe you would want that, like, like that adhesive glue for that. Um, but since this is for a paper, um, I like to use PVA glue because I know that it's archival and it's designed uh, to be non-yellowing. And so sometimes, you know, a little bit of patina is not going to hurt anybody and you can grunge these up. And also I should mention that is that if you finish this off and you're like, oh, I want to bedazzle this a little bit more go ahead, add, paint on top of it, add dots, glue crystals to it. You could do all kinds of stuff to embellish these beads and really make them your own. Um, you can also do techniques where you finish off the edges um, by taking a, um, uh, basically making a tube 
of paper and inserting that in there and folding that over before you do your um, before you do your roll. That's a little bit more complicated, and I don't think it adds that that much to it. Um, but I think this is a fun way to create a really fast and unique uh, use for your gel press printing. Now, here's the way that I was taught to do it way back when in Arkansas. In Pig at Arkansas. All right, so it's going to be a little bit of a modified version of what I learned because um, I don't want to have that cowlick. And I very precisely eyeballed this, so you know it's 100% completely scientific accurate. All right, so... I learned using a dowel rod and school glue, y'all. Um, Teresa says, do you have to use a straw? Um, I like to use a straw because I don't like things to go to waste and to like landfills. So I have a thing, a container of straws I've collected over the years. And so I don't mind using those. And I think it gives it a cleaner hole so if you have stir straws, they're great because they have small holes if you want to make small hole beads. But I like having that because it won't get caught up, you know. Sometimes you you get the paper beads and they're kind of, they won't. But anyway, so you have another one of these tapered triangle shapes, elongated tapered triangle shapes. And then I'm going to get just a, a little bit of glue and I'm going to put just on the very edge of my paper, all right? And I'm going to line this up so that, and also sometimes you can wax your sticks. So if you have some wax, some beeswax, you can a candle, you can rub that into it. And that will help it not stick to your dowel rod because, or your either your dowel rod or your shish kebab skewer or whatever. But it can get real sticky, y'all. And then it will stick to the to your mandrel and then it will no longer be a bead. All right. So when you do this, just take on that very tip and fold it over. And then take and press down like this. So you're, you're sealing any, any excess glue is going to go out this way, this way, and not this way. Because if it goes this way, it's going to stick to this shish kebab skewer. And um, we want it, any excess to go this way where it would squeeze out this lip of the paper. Now, in theory, your, your shish kebab skewer should be movable, y'all. This is not, it should not be stuck. But um, yeah, so then you take this and you glue, add your glue to the underside like so. And I'm just going to do the whole thing while I've got my fingers in it. And if you wanted to use like a, a Q-tip or something or wear gloves, um, you can do that. Um, you know, I work with my fingers a lot at my work, so I don't have a problem with it. Um, but, um, you know... It's up to you because I know some people don't like it. So um, you want to make sure that your glue is not too thick. Like I said, if it's too thick, it'll get squeeze out the edges and then it will be less than desirable. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start rolling this and you're going to roll very tightly. And you're going to want to keep it even. So if it wants to go off to the side... You know, you're going to have to course correct a little bit and roll a little bit more on this one side 
and that's going to help it stay even and you'll have a nice bead shape. Now you can make these really long. I, um, and it will make your bead wider. Um, I went the short ways across the paper, but you can go the long ways and it will create a thicker bead. So if you want a thicker bead, then go on ahead and do that. And if you get any wrinkles, it's not the end of the world. Um, and you can taper them and um, really press them into the bead. So this is like a traditional, more traditional looking um, paper bead. Um, and if you want, you can just roll it tighter and you'll get, um, you know, I don't mind that. I think that looks good. And you can embellish that. But in if you did this right, it shouldn't you shouldn't stick to your shish kebab skewer, and you should be able to pull it off. All right. And so I'm going to get a paper towel. Actually, I'm just going to wipe it on this cardboard. And there you go. So then you can cover these. Um, now, if you do have metallic, sometimes if you put a coating on it, um, it can deaden your metallic. So just keep that in mind. Christy Friesen, she has this line of um, patina, patinas and uh, it's called Swelligant. And she has a matte sealant, which is designed for, for polymer, but it can be used on wood and metal and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it works on this as well. And I find that it doesn't dull the metallics as much as some of the others. Like if you'd use gel medium on certain um, metallics, it will just make them completely flat. So you'll have a vibrant, like sparkly gold, and then you'll paint over it with that, uh, like a matte gel medium, and it will just look like uh, an ochre color yellow. Um, and it will take all that kind of metallic sheen off of it. And it's just because of how the light works. Um, but I find that Christy Friesen Swelligant Clear Sealant, Matte Sealant, works pretty well of preserving that, um, that shine. All right. So there's two different ways of making paper beads with your prints using the gel print press. And I think that's pretty fun. What do you all think? Did you like that? Teresa says, I, I like the look of the bead on the skewer, the shish kebab skewer. Now I was telling you about how, you know, you don't necessarily have to taper it. If you don't want to taper it, you don't necessarily have to taper it. I'm going to go halfway here. I'm going to do another one. And, um, Suzanne says, yes, very interesting, new to me. All right, so I'm going to do another one on the shish kebab skewer. And this side, I'm going to go, and it's going to be a little bit different, y'all. And what I'm going to do is, instead of having a tapered look, I'm just going to go and do a rectangle a straight strip. Now, like I said, the thicker you make your, or the longer you make your strip, the thicker your bead will be. And so this is gonna have a different look than the other one, just because of the shape of the um, the strip that I'm using. I'm going pretty fast and I'm not necessarily pressing this as firmly as I should 
but you get the picture of what I'm doing. And make sure that that little end is glued up. And then it'll make a cylinder bead. All right. So that actually kind of looked like a LaCroix can to me, but which if you're making like miniatures, maybe that's a cute idea. Now you could also, if you wanted to, I'm gonna do a variation and show you. So I'm cutting a thin strip and I'm gonna cut a thick strip. Also, the cool thing about using the straw is that you can use, um, you can get really big beads like this and uh, it's very light. So, you know, and then you could do all kinds of stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do again with the shish kebab skewer. I'm just gonna do that edge there. And push this in nice and tight. And then cover this up. And you could use a brush if you wanted to not use your finger. I would use a craft brush. And if you use a craft brush, um, try to remove as many bristles beforehand because otherwise they can come out in your glue. And if you're working with really fine paper, this is kind of thick paper, but if you're working with like a rice paper or something, it would, you could see it for one. And then the other thing is that um, you can all, it'll also cause it to get bulgy too, which, you know, it's paper beads. So it's not like, you know, this is a, fast and fun kind of project, not necessarily something that you have to agonize over and like, oh my gosh, this is not 100% even, just make another one. Um, the cool thing about that gel press is you end up with a mountain of prints relatively quickly. Um, and so um, you'll have lots of material to work with. Now, if you want a really crisp, crisp edge, when you get this um, and it's dry, take a very sharp razor blade and cut it and it will make a very clean, very clean cut. Now, I'm going to do a little bit something different where I did this roll with a thicker one inch strand. And then what I'm gonna do with this, this is a half inch strand and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna put this in like the middle. And this would be better if I had a different color. Maybe if I, I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna give myself a contrasting color. Um, because I want this to really pop out, right? I don't want it to like blend in necessarily. So this is a green and then I've got this red kind of end and that I'm just gonna create a little bat belt and I'm not gonna forget to glue, add glue to this. Now I've seen a couple of people do it a, a, other ways you can get um, double-sided tape, double stick tape and use that instead of gluing it. Um, and that makes it really clean. Um, 
and you'll have a nice, very clean and very precise. You're not going to have um, a lot of excess glue everywhere. Um, you just kind of put down your your print on one side of that few, that double sided sheet or t tape, and then um, when you're ready, you pull off the adhesive, and then um, you can use that, and it will create a very clean uh, look. Now I'm going to take this up off of my area, my work area, because I got glue on my work area. And that's getting excess glue on my bead. And it's kind of looking gummy, which is not my favorite. So I'm kind of spinning this in thin air, which is fine. And then I'm going to cut this before I get to the tutu end. Because if I get down to the end, it kind of, that color kind of dissipates. And you're not having that striking red against that kind of green color. So this way you can kind of build up dimension. You don't have to work just making cylinders or tapered cylinders. You don't have to just make this, but you can make, you know, a cylinder and then do a wrap on top of that and it will build up dimension that way. Um, Teresa says, with a straw, you can use bigger stringing material. Yeah, you can use bigger stringing material. Uh, this is ample enough for be uh, beads to fit through. So if you have some beads that are, you know, cheapy beads, you can use that to line this. You could use like a ball chain. You can use all kinds of stuff that with a smaller hole, you couldn't necessarily do. So I think that's a fun way of doing that. Um, and then also, if you want, you can kind of shave these down. Um, but you, if you do that, just be careful because those blades are super duper sharp. Um, and you can cut yourself. They're actually designed for the medical industry. Um, those tissue blades are designed to cut tissue, which is AKA your flesh. So I'm making thin, thin slices of it. So if you use one of those to clean up the edges and make them precise, uh, be very careful. I always mark the edge that I'm going to, uh, it's okay to handle because if you uh, mess up and you press into the blade part, then it's the blood time and nobody wants the blood time. And people are like, oh, who would do that? Who would do that? But I've seen it and I've heard stories of people doing that. So just be careful. All right, so here you go. Uh, Teresa says, I want to buy a gel press now. I think they're fun. Um, I've only had mine for a couple days, so I'm going to continue to play around with it. Um, I use pearlescent paints with this, and it's a metallic, so it kind of gives them, you know, a little festive vibe to this to make the paper beads. Um, and like I said, you can always, um... There are lots of tricks of hiding your edges if you don't like the edges. You can paint the edges, you can stain the edges. Um, one thing you can do if you want is take a little bit of the paint. I'll pick a different finger that's not crusty with, with glue. And um, just take that and just dab it real gently around the edges and you can dress up those edges if you don't like the white edges of the paper all right and you can do different things like incorporate text um one of my friends um she is um deeply spiritual and uh, she wanted to make rosaries and she used um, Bible pages to make paper beads um, and she dipped them in resin 
and they kind of, the pages almost became translucent in a way. And that was a really beautiful way of incorporating something that was meaningful to her. And um, yeah. So you can use all different kinds of ephemera. Now, if you have something that's like super precious, um, make a photocopy of it and use that. Don't use like, you know, your um, precious heirloom immigration papers from your great, great grandfather um, because it's neat that it's there, but once it's all rolled up, you don't know what that is anymore. So you get the hint of it, but um, Norma says, is it acrylic paint? Yes. And says, Andrew is a craft supply enabler. Correct. I like it. We'll all bring our gel presses and have gel press a day at the shop. I don't know. Um, um, Marcy says, with resin, if you don't seal the paper, it will become more translucent, which is really cool. Susan Leonard um, used to make these uh, pages um, that she did. They were kind of like head pins that had hoops on the end that she would glue paper to. Um, in Cynthia's book, she did one where she did tissue paper, and the tissue paper goes almost completely uh, translucent, like clear, and made uh, fairy wings with them. So depending on what you use, the materials, you can have a lot of really, a lot of fun playing around with um, with translucency and light. And you could um, do all kinds of things. Um, but to steal this, I would say either the Crystal Krylon or the Christy uh, Friesen Swelligant Matte Sealer or uh, UV resin works wonderful. Well, Two-part epoxy resin, it will work, but it is something that will be sticky for eight hours. And unless you um, are super careful, that will get everywhere and uh, sounds like nightmare time to me. So just be mindful of that. Um, because, uh, maybe, you know, you're more careful than I am, but whenever I work with resin, if I'm not super, uh, particular, it will get everywhere. And then, uh, then I get in trouble for getting resin in the carpet. So don't do that. Um, all right. Um, Diane says, can you make round beads? Uh, yeah, you can make round beads. You just have to plan it a little bit more about how your um, pages come or how you cut your paper. So if you make a super sharp end, you can have a taper. But for one, you have to start with a really long piece of paper, all right? So, um... If you start with just this much, it's not going to get very round. Um, so you have to start with a long, long piece and uh, taper it down so that it's a gradual kind of slope. It's not going to be perfectly round. Um, I'm sure there's a way of figuring that out so that you can get a perfectly round one. But in my experience, I've never gotten like a perfect sphere. Um, but those Uganda bees are fairly round and they're made out of paper. So it's possible. You just have to get the geometry of your cuts right. Um, and then and make sure that you have a, a long enough piece of paper. Now, if you run out of paper and you're not quite to the volume that you're right, you want. So say you, you get to the very end of your piece of paper say that this is sticking out and you want it to be thicker 
all you have to do is cut another piece and glue this on to this piece. And then when you're rolling it, nobody will ever know that that's glued together. So you can make a really thick, rounder or a thicker bead. Um, so yeah. Um, Marcy says, Google paper bees on YouTube and you'll find videos on how to make all types of them. Yeah, there's a wealth of resources out there. Marcy says, I have used Tyvek with my jelly plate. And when you have your beads rolled and glued, you can take them and take a heat tool and melt them. That's neat. I don't know exactly what that entails, but sounds cool. Um, yeah, you could do all kinds of stuff. I mean, it, the sky's the limit with your experimentation. You could probably use um, maybe shrink plastic. And as long as you had like a molding container, you could kind of control how, how, how much it kind of spreads out. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. But there's a lot of different things that you could do. And really, it's just up to you and your creativity and what you can kind of come up with. You can incorporate all kinds of stuff. So I did one layer. But if you wanted to, you could glue multiple layers with, you know, you could glue fabric on top of your paper and roll that or you know, create all different kinds of uh, interesting textures. And you could even like wind yarn into it. So really, it's just up to you and what you your personal aesthetic is and what you like, you know. All right. We did stuff. We made things. How do you all feel? Um... Do you feel empowered and ready to buy a gel press? <laughs> um, I wish I sold gel presses now. Um, all right. Hi, everybody. So I turned on that super bright light. And so you can see every pore on my face, which is super fun. Um, but today we made these paper beads. This one has a straw core. Um, I like this. This is an easy, easy peasy. It's uh, less messy than some of the other ones. And uh, I like it. It just has a nice finished finished look to me but you can definitely do it without this the plastic i haven't tried to use a paper straw but i imagine it would work the same um it's relatively rigid enough so you could probably get away with it um but we also made these this one kind of has like an obi belt which is kind of fun and then this one is that tapered one, like a tapered tube. And then I thought we made, oh wait, we made this other one, this little LaCroix can. It doesn't look like a little LaCroix can. And we use them using our gel press prints. So if you have a bunch of those just laying around, taking up space, invading your life and weighing on your mind space of just sitting there, you can make paper beads out of them. And I think that's a really cool and fun idea. Um, yeah, you can embellish these more if you want. I showed just a quick little tip about finishing off the edge with a little bit of acrylic paint. Um, if you're gonna do that, you wanna make sure that you use something soft. Um, I thought about just smearing this on the cardboard and dapping it in there, um, which you could do, but I feel like you kind of need that kind of soft um, touch to kind of get into the little nooks and crannies. 
Um, Facebook user says, I'll wait for my gel press until you get them in your shop. Um, we'll see if I can get it. Um, I don't know if I can. We'll see. You never know. Um, Julie says, like them all. Um, Lennis says, looks like fun, Andrew. Thanks for showing us. Happy birthday tomorrow, Lennis. I didn't get your package out in time, so you, you have a package coming. Um, Marcy says, yours are beautiful. I like the metallic paints. I, I have put triple thick on them as well. There's a lot of different things you can put. There's diamond glaze. There's different. It just depends on what your end look you want. Um, also, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can mix into your mediums as well. So if you want them to be more sparkly, you can mix uh, mica pigment powders into your uh, sealant if it's a brushable one and then brush that on. Um, Facebook user says, I haven't been into paper beads until watching your video today. And now I want to make some. You know, I think they're really fun. Um, and I think if you take reference from historical um, kind of references, like um, if you did like kimono fabrics as a reference or, or things like a textile, like a William Morris kind of print, you can drive or uh, derive uh, inspiration from those. And they kind of have, uh, you know, those color palettes have, uh, you know, there's something to them. So if you're stuck on what to do with your gel press, that might be a source of inspiration is to look at different textiles from around the world. Um, and that may be a good source for you, for you to get that kind of creative juices flowing. Um, Diane says, it was a fun presentation. I have a new way to use my stacks of gel prints. Look out, world. Oh, good. Now, if you do make anything, we would love to see what you make. Be sure to share it in the Allegory Gallery Design Challenge group. Um, that's where we share most of the things we make. Um, it's always nice, you know. And if you use this technique, if you want to give us a shout out back to Allegory Gallery, um, that's always kind to do that. Um, I see a couple more. Michelle says, now I know how to make my paper beads, how my paper beads were made. They were donated to me. Um, there's a couple different ways of making them. So this is not the only way, just in case. Um, another comment. I now have a new technique to use to make beads. Thank you. Oh, good. Lena says, kind of kind of you to think of me. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. My brain is like a sieve, so I don't always remember things, but when I do, and they pop up, and they float to the surface, um, I do have fond memory. I wonder if um, my mom or anybody in our family has any of the paper beads that we, we made as children, because it would be fun to look at those. But also, you can do this with collage. Um, the one thing about collage is you want to make sure that the glue that you use is going to be a slightly flexible glue. Um, and this may mean one of two things, either one that you have to do it while it's still slightly damp and not completely dry. That's one option. Number two is to heat it because sometimes that relaxes glue and creates it into being more pliable. However, there's more of a chance of you burning your fingertips. Um, so just make sure that you use a flexible glue if you're going to do collaged elements, because if you use a stiff, hard glue, if you use like a methyl cellulose, when that dries, it dries perfectly flat and it will just flake off. Um, or if you use like a wood glue, that'll crack. 
So just make sure that you use a glue that's flexible so that when you roll it up, it doesn't crack and create a bunch of problems for you. Um, Facebook user says, would Mod Podge turn metallic paint non-metallic? Um, I don't know. You have to experiment um, because there's different kinds of Mod Podge. And so, you know, I don't know if all of them are the same or not. So you just really have to play around with it and see. Um, I do know that like general gel medium will make metallic turn flat. So Mod Podge, I'm kind of leaning towards yes, that that will happen. Um, but I don't know. You just have to try it. Um, all right. So hopefully you had fun today. Uh, if you do make anything with these, we'd love to see. Um, maybe I'll make something using some paper beads so that you can get your kind of, you'll be like, oh, what do you do with these beads now that you have them done? Um, maybe I'll make something next week. Maybe if the weather's nicer and I get to go to the cottage, then maybe I'll um, I'll do it sooner rather than later. We'll see. Things are going to be changing a little bit with our schedules. Um, our friend V, they got a new job, so um, they're not going to be helping out at the shop anymore. Um, and so uh, we either need to find a new replacement or either me or William have to cover it. So that's going to change up some things. I don't think it will change up things too dramatically. Like if anything, he'll be tuning in more from the store instead of at the cottage. And uh, we might have to close the day in the physical store. So we'll see how the ball bounces because I'm about to leave for like a month. So that's less than ideal for, um, for me covering things when I'm going to be gone already. All right. Have a great day. Hopefully you all have a great evening. Have a happy new year. If I don't see y'all before then, I'm sure I will maybe. And yes, See ya.